What's up, Tab iFam? If we haven't had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Stu, and I'm so glad that you have chosen to show up today for this Tab Global experience, especially if you are new. I want you to know that here, we are so glad that you have chosen to join us today. Yo, if you would do me a favor, I want you to drop that one emoji in the comment section so that we know where you're worshiping from, so that we know it's your first time here and that we can engage with you so we can tell you today that you have a place here. Yo, before we get ready for worship and get started with worship, I just want to say that we at TAP are so proud of you. Yo, we're, you're not here today and you, you we're not here physically, but we're scattered together. And the way that y'all have been adapting and adjusting, we are so proud of you. You know, worship is different. It is actually kind of weird right now, but how many know that worship is worth it. You know, worship does something. It doesn't simply change, you know, how we feel, but it also changes how we see. And so we come and we gather together so that we may be transformed by God so that wherever we go, we'll be a transformed people. And you know, that's what we exist for at TAB. We exist to make an impact for Jesus by being a worshiping, a witnessing, and a welcoming community. Yo, we have some incredible things planned for you today. We we're starting a new series, Finding the Cure. I know that y'all are ready. Worship team, I know y'all have been practicing and are ready to go. How about you take us away? Amen. Let's give God all the glory because he's worthy of the honor. We give him all the praise. Come on, come on, come on. Set.
tenor. Come on, give him glory right where you are. Cause there is a lifting of the hands. And there is a lifting of the hearts. There is a lifting of the eyes. Beyond.
My God, I know you could feel that. My God, that we have a God who sits high and looks low. And while the rest of the world is being tossed and turned, we can look to the hills from where our help comes from. you got to be excited about that. So as we gather today in corporate prayer, I want you to gather your friends and families around where you are. We want to look to God who is our help, and he is the source of all of our strength. We want to pray for you if you need us to partner with you. The information is on the screen for you to email us. We'd be happy to partner with, with, with you with all of your concerns. But today is a very exciting day around the campuses of our church that we are celebrating 13 years with our senior pastor serving as the senior pastor teacher of the historic Tabernacle Baptist Church. And we're excited for the Reverend Dr. Charles E. Goodman Jr. And I pray that you are as well. So we're going to be praying for him today as we go before the throne of grace. God, we love you today and we bless you and we thank you for your very presence in our lives. We thank you, God, because we can look to the hills from which comes our help. All of our help, God, it comes from you. And in the middle of this pandemic, God, where we're having to stay at home and being mindful of our spaces, we know, God, that no matter where we are, even though we are walking through valleys of shadows of death, your rod and your staff are with us, and we say thank you for your glory being revealed in our lives. We pause today, God, to celebrate the man of God that you placed here, that you said that you've given gifts in the body of Christ, and some of those are pastors and teachers, God. God who give for the building of the edifying of the children of God and for the work of the ministry. So we thank you for our gift that you've assigned here at Tabernacle in the person of Dr. Goodman. We're praying for him, God. We're lifting him up and we're encouraging him today for 13 years, God, laboring in the vineyard at this church. We thank you, God, for his life. We thank you for his strength and his ministry. We pray, God, continue blessings over his life. We pray, God, that in his mind and his heart and his soul and his spirit, man, that, God, you will continue to strengthen him and to walk with him wherever he goes. And we pray, God, for many more successful years as he continues to make an impact in, this, in our lives and in this community and now even globally. So we thank you and we bless you and pray you receive our worship today and get all glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. And you ought to celebrate God wherever you are and thank him for his very presence in your life. If you will, prepare your hearts to receive a warm welcome from our congregation and from our senior pastor. Welcome, Tab iFam, and thank you for worshiping with us through Tab Global, which is our website, Tab Impact app, Facebook, and YouTube. We thank you for showing up, for sharing, supporting, and engaging. Now remember to share the link and invite your family and friends to join you too. The good news is too good not to be shared. As you normally would do, feel free to get out of your seat and sing along with our praise team. And shout and type your amens in the comments as you're blessed by the Word of God. So, on behalf of PG, that's what our family calls pastor, and the entire Tabernacle Baptist Church family, we welcome you. And thank you for being a part of our Tab I Bank. Come on, let's worship. What's up, Tab I fam? So good to see you on this day of worship. We are excited because we know that God is still in control and is in the blessing business. Matter of fact, this is your first time with us. As we told you before, put that one emoji in the comments section. Let us know uh, this is your first opportunity sharing with us through our Tab Global platform. It is so wonderful to see each and every one of you. I can feel your presence in this place. Matter of fact, give a shout Shout out to where you are and where you're viewing us from. It'd be incredible for us to know as we have moved to this place of having a global impact. Our tab, I team is right there to interact with you, to engage you. Matter of fact, a part of our IFAM is already online, ready to give you some virtual hugs and some virtual high fives. We know that we have to be at a social distance right now, but that does not mean that we cannot stay connected and we do not take your presence for lightly. So make sure you share and put a wide Watch party on. Make sure that you are staying in tune with the many things that are happening at the Tabernacle Baptist Church. We are excited to see how God is still doing some incredible work, even though we're
we're going through this crisis right now. Matter of fact, you don't have to take my word for it. We have some incredible things we want to share with you. So while you are virtually hugging and fellowshipping one another, make sure you keep your eyes on that screen as we give you some important announcements and some news to share with you to help you better understand how we believe we are the most impactful place on the planet. God bless you. Introducing Tab Global. Worship with us whenever and wherever through our website, Facebook, YouTube, and our Tab Impact app. The virus of fear. Worry, discouragement, loneliness, and despair has overtaken our lives. We're in a spiritual health crisis. In times like these, it's easy to give up. It's easy to allow the troubles of today to disrupt the hope of tomorrow. We're trying to figure out, will life ever be the same? We're faced with the reality that we have been infected. The question for us is this. When we're fighting for our lives, what do we need? We need help. We need healing. We need a cure. Isn't that what we're looking for? Greetings, Tab family. Listen, I fam, we hope you're doing well, that you're staying safe, staying clean, washing those hands, and most importantly, we hope that you are making the most of what we call our next season. Today, we're celebrating. We've actually been celebrating all week. We've had Pastor Goodman with us for 13 years. PG-13 it is. We are so grateful. Listen, the word of God in Jeremiah 3 and 15 says that God will send us pastors according to his heart. Pastors that will what? Give us understanding and knowledge. And aren't we blessed with that? Don't take it from me. Keep watching. We're going to share with you as some of our members and friends and family tell you happy anniversary, PG. Keep your eyes on the screen. Happy anniversary, Reverend Goodman. You are the greatest. And we are so blessed to have a pastor who loves his members with such passion. Not only do you love your members, but you love the community at large and you're always doing God's work in the community. Thank you so much for such a splendid leadership that you have shown us in the last 13 years. We are greater people because you are here with us. Well, happy anniversary, my brother. Congratulations, man. I am so proud of you. Dr. Charles E. Goodman, you are somebody's preacher, but you are an even better friend. Thank you for praying for me, uplifting me, and encouraging me every day, man. I'm praying that God will continue to bless you and the Tabernacle Baptist Church family. You're doing a mighty work for the Lord. Keep your head up, man. Hang in there. Look forward to seeing you soon. Tab, hate I missed you this year, but we say congratulations to you as well. And may the Lord God bless you both real good. Pastor Goodman, first of all, I wanted to tell you, we love you. 13 years ago, when you, we were blessed to have you come to be the shepherd of Tabernacle Baptist Church. You've been a blessing to me, my family, and this entire community. And we just wanted to say happy 13th from the bottom of our heart. We love you, Pastor. She told you the truth, Pastor. Um, you have been quite amazing for us here at Tabernacle Baptist Church for the past 13 years. You've taken us to a higher level. I believe that during this year, the year of the COVID-19, you've been a voice for God. You've been uh, letting us see blind spots. You've also been letting us have encounters with God for his people. So thank you for the word that you've been giving us. So on behalf of the congregants of this Tabernacle Baptist Church, we like to remind you of what you already know. God is able. We love you. Thank you so much for your service and happy 13th anniversary. Dr. Charles E. Goodman Jr., my friend, my brother, blood could not make us closer. And this is the first year in many years that I'm not there with you to celebrate this pastoral anniversary. I just wanted to let you know, man, that I love you. And I'm grateful to God for your ministry in my life personally and to the Tabernacle Baptist Church. Tab, you are incredibly blessed with a visionary, creative, powerful preacher. And you all ought to celebrate him well 
and thank God for the gift that's in your midst. Hey man, listen, I want you to celebrate, enjoy, reflect, and be grateful for what God is doing through your life because it makes a difference in my life. God bless me. Reverend Dr. Charles E. Goodman, my brother, my pastor, my friend. Happy 13th anniversary here with us uh, at Tabernacle. You've been a blessing and an anointment. God has particularly and peculiarly prepared you to do what you do with great fever, great fervor, great expertise. Uh, you are particularly and peculiarly prepared to do what you do. We thank God for you. Uh, you bring his blessing from him to you, to us. To God be the glory. Happy 13th anniversary. Happy anniversary, God Day. I love you. Doesn't it make your heart smile to know that Pastor Goodman's not only been a blessing to you, but so many others. Listen, we're so grateful. Happy anniversary, PG. We can't express that enough. If we could have got everybody on screen, we certainly would have. But listen, share your love with him however you see fit. Thank you so much for worshiping with us at the most impactful place on the planet, the historic Tabernacle Baptist Church. I am blown away. I cannot believe that it's been 13 years since God graced me with the wonderful privilege to lead what I believe is the most incredible people in the entire world, the Tabernacle Baptist Church. Who would have thought 13 years ago, as a young 27-year-old, was sent this way to Augusta, Georgia, that God would do the work that God has done over the last 13 years. I thank you personally for loving me, supporting me through the good, the bad, the ups, and the downs. You guys have continually showed your appreciation with me. And I'm appreciative simply of you walking this journey with me. And I pledge with you, I tell you this every year, I'm excited to see what God is going to do. Even though we're in unusual times, to say the least, and we're going through a difficult time, and my heart grieves that I can't see you in person. But man, I know that God is going to get us through this. So thank you to every person that has shared some word of encouragement. Thank you to every person that has prayed a prayer. I thank you for everyone uh, that has given me uh, words of support support but also just words to help me be a better pastor and that is my chief aim every single day is that I can be a better pastor because I serve some great people so I appreciate you I honor you uh, it's been unusual this year you know it's a little weird especially not being able to have family and friends here to celebrate uh, but I'm just amazed at the outpouring of love many of you even showed up to our PG kickback this past Friday it was a great time for us just to have fun thank you to DJ Nightmare our aim for those couple of hours was just to take your mind off of what we're going through and many of you showed through all of our platforms on YouTube and Facebook and IG uh, that we just had a great time. I'm telling you, you can be cool and fun and love the Lord. Thank you so much. And we got some more things that's going to come out of that. But also, I'm appreciative of the fact that I know during this time that most people, they share and show a tangible expression of love to their pastor. And over these past 13 years, you guys have never ceased showing your love for me. And not just in what you say, but also in how you sow. What I'm asking this year, everything that typically will come towards me by way of what we call an anniversary gift gift. I want to put that back, give that back. I'm raising all that you would normally do if you appreciate me as your pastor. I want you to give back today and we're going to share. We started an initiative a couple of weeks ago and man, we see the need for it in our community. Our Hope Seed offering is what we're raising in order to help small businesses in our city. We know that this is going to be not just a health crisis, but also an economic crisis. So I'm asking that you would give whatever platform when it's time for us to give that you would give and just put on it PG-13 give back. This is our opportunity to be a blessing. That's what I believe in. I believe in blessing and helping others. So will you help me? If you love me, if you care for me, you support me, I need you to help us support this initiative of our PG-13 give back. It's going into our Hope Seed offering and we know that it's going to be a blessing to others. Speaking of being a blessing to others, my God, what an incredible time we just shared this past week. Uh, only yesterday we were able to have our first virtual new partners orientation. We had two sessions. It was a great time for us to be able to share with our new partners 
partners, people called in from all across the globe, and we was able to have a little conversation. They were introduced to our executive staff to find out some history about our church. I'm just excited that even in these interesting times, people are still connecting with us because they see the vitality and also the strength and the impact of our church. So thank you, thank you so much for those who are our partners. Speaking of being generous, as we prepare our hearts to give, I want to thank you, Tabernacle, for your uh, uh, generosity. This past week, you helped us to be a blessing to our frontline uh, workers. We were able to share with them through snacks and beverages. We could not do that without the radical generosity of the Tabernacle Church. And I am just so grateful to be a part of an amazing group of people that believe in sowing in others. That even during these difficult times, you still maintain a high level of stewardship and faithfulness to God. Speaking of stewardship and faithfulness to God, it's our time to give. This is our opportunity for us to share in the wonderful ways that God has blessed us. Now listen, I know the times are getting tough, but I am so grateful that many of you, I cannot say how proud I am, are staying faithful to the clarion call of God calling us to be faithful. That we're called to be stewards of our time, our talent, and yes, even our treasure. So you see the ways that you can give. I pray that you would give your absolute best gift, whether it's through Givelify or text to give or cash app and uh, or even go to our website, tbcaugusta.org and there's a place on there that you can give as well. We want you to know that we appreciate all that you're doing. Matter of fact, I want to give a shout out to those who are mailing their gifts in and some are dropping them off. You have continued to stay faithful in this time and let me tell you, we are doing our best to make sure that we continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. While we're giving at this time, let me pray for us as we share, realizing that the gifts we give is not from our pockets, but it's from our heart. God, we thank you for this precious privilege to share, and we are appreciative of the fact that you give to us more than we deserve. And God, we know that during this time, we can be easily distracted and swayed and, and read the news and trust other reports. But God, we believe that your report is true. That you're a God that provides favor even in uncertain times. So we sow these seeds today because we're not sowing from our pockets, but sowing from our hearts. I thank you for many who are once again partnering with us to make a difference in the world today. I'm also grateful for those who are sowing today in appreciation for 13 years. And as we sow today to appreciate 13 years, we're sowing to help other people. So Lord, I pray that you bless this initiative, a PG-13 give back, that you allow us to bless others through our hope seed offering thank you thank you god for letting us partner with you in purpose and we believe the best is still yet to come thank you for being a god of overflow this is our prayer in jesus name we do pray amen while you're giving bountifully and cheerfully let's prepare our hearts to receive a word from god as we once again ushered into the presence of god through our worship and arts ministry at this time
you are, begin to just lift him up. Begin to tell him how wonderful he is. Come on, he's worthy of the glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. And this is our war cry today. Oh. Welcome to our examination room, and uh, before I give you your test results, uh, I'm a man of faith, so I hope that you will pray with me. God, we come in this moment, and it's our desire and our prayer that you would speak to us. A lot going on in our world, specifically there are many of us who are wrestling with the many things that can sometimes enter our life and could destroy so, Lord, I pray in this moment that as we consider how to combat these things that can sometimes overtake us, that you will once again allow us to be strengthened. And ultimately, God, we pray that you will direct us to a cure. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, welcome. Um, I'm glad you showed up today. Um, I've got some news to tell you. The news I need to tell you is... You've tested positive. No, no, I, no, not, not what you're thinking. Not coronavirus, not COVID-19. That in itself is gripping our world. And we're praying that there will come a solution, some kind of treatment for it. The numbers for coronavirus are absolutely devastating. Anything that causes us to lose life is tough. 
But, but what you tested for today that I brought you here to discuss is not coronavirus. No, it's another virus. Matter of fact, over the next couple of weeks, I've, I've run a couple of tests, and I've seen that you've been infected by some things that can potentially destroy, can potentially be harmful. I'm looking at the results now, and I'm trying to figure out a way to, to let you know what this first test shows that you have. I'm a storyteller by nature, so pardon me if I can kind of explain it, because I, I want to make sure that I, I'm able to articulate in a way that's going to at least give you some ease with what you've tested positive for. When I think about how to really explain it to you, I would say it this way. <laughs> I'm a history buff, and some while ago, there was a man by the name of Black Bart. You may never even heard of him, but he's one of what we consider the most famous stagecoach robbers of all time. He robbed over 29 different stagecoaches between 1875 and 1883. Stagecoaches that he robbed went from New York all the way to San Francisco. But what made it interesting about Black Bart is that he terrorized with no gun. He didn't fire a shot. He never took a hostage. He only had a hood over his face, which means that every victim that he saw never saw his face. It was his mere presence that paralyzed his victims and was able to rob them of everything that they had. His sinister presence was enough to terrorize them. Even the strongest of stagecoach guards succumbed to Black Bart. And what he used was intimidation. And what he used literally was fear. That's what our test, test today says, that you are infected with the virus called fear. Fear is tough, and that's what I want to share with you, and I want to let you know as we come today, I, I don't, I see the glum look on your face. But let me tell you that there is truth, there is really no immunity from fear. Fear itself is hard. Matter of fact, if we were to give you this, and as a medical doctor, I have to explain it for you. Fear is a chain reaction in the brain that starts with a stressful stimulus and ends with the release of chemicals that cause a racing heart or fast breathing. And it creates in us what is called the fight or flight response. I know you've heard of that. And that's what I want to talk today. Because what happens when you have this virus called fear? What happens when you have to wrestle with this thing attacking you, even if you are going through the precautions to try to guard yourself from it? I know you're wondering today, and I, that's why I brought you. I want to let you know. Because sometimes there are some people who have fear and don't even know that they have it. There's some physical symptoms to fear. There's, there's sweating. There's trembling. Also, my notes tell me there can be hot flashes or chills, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing. Many of us have that even as I'm speaking. Or even a choking sensation. <laughs> also, my notes say that some of the symptoms that you have exhibited is rapid heartbeat tightness of the chest, or yes, I know this is one, feels like butterflies are in your stomach. These are symptoms of fear that manifests itself in a physical way, but also there are spiritual symptoms of fear. There's worry. Worry itself becomes a spiritual symptom of fear. So does anxiety. And also, I know all of us especially during this time, can talk about stress. Stress itself is a symptom of fear. But I know you're asking the critical question. <laughs> Doc, how did I get it? I've been practicing social distance. I've been trying to make sure that I stay sheltered in place. But here's the thing about fear. Fear does not care if you are social distance from someone. It does not even care if you are quarantined at the house. Fear can come anywhere. Matter of fact, this is how we contract. It's simply a, a threat stimulus. Anything that somehow triggers a response in us. It, it could be a predator or an animal that you saw. It, or in lieu of what we're facing today, uncertainty. Numbers on TV telling us how many people have died from a particular disease. 
Or it could be the threat of a loss of life or, yes, even the threat of the loss of income. But here's the truth about fear. A lot of times we're intimidated by fear because fear also makes us scared of things that have not even happened yet. Fear has this weird way of causing one to be closeted and us to struggle. All I see on your, your sheet, it also tells me that you're a believer in God. You follow Jesus. And I can imagine in your mind, you're probably thinking, I follow Jesus, but I'm still fearful. Let me put your mind to rest. You can love Jesus and still wrestle with fear. You can love Jesus and still grapple with terror and trauma. That I need you to understand today, don't feel like you're odd. I don't want you to feel like you're by yourself. Fear happens to all of us. Pastors, elders, choir members, ushers, anybody can catch fear. Matter of fact, it even happens when you love the Lord. <laughs> There's a little boy by the name of Johnny. He was about five years old, and he was in the kitchen uh, with his mother. She was cooking dinner, and his mother needed him to go get a can of soup out of the pantry. Uh, but what a funny thing is that Johnny was fiercely afraid of the dark, and the pantry was dark. He told his mom, Mom, I can't, I can't go to the pantry. It's dark. Go get it yourself. She kept pleading back and forth with Johnny until finally she said, listen, Johnny, Jesus will be there with you. Johnny goes reluctantly to the pantry. It's dark. He opens it up, peeks inside, sees that it's still dark. His fears get triggered. But then a bright idea comes in. This is what Johnny does. And he epitomizes what me and you do from time to time. He yells in the dark pantry room. This is what he says. Jesus, if you're there, would you hand me the can of tomato soup? In other words, he tried to navigate fear and Jesus in the same space. Let me help you. For those who are scientific in your mind, fear really has two meanings. First of all, it can mean forget everything and run, which is potentially what many of us do, especially when fear grips us. Or the alternative is face everything and rise. Oh, I need somebody to hear that. Either you can forget everything and run, that can be fear for you, or you can face everything and rise. This is it. The choice is yours. Matter of fact, the Bible, which is going to be our manual over the next few weeks, that is able to exemplify to us the medical remedies, how we can manage the viruses that affect us, tells us this, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power and of love and a sound mind. Listen, I got good news for you because I can already tell how gloomy you feel. Say, how did I catch this fear? How am I going to get rid of this fear? And I know you heard me tell you there's no immunity to fear, but I got good news for you. And the good news is simply this. There's a cure for your fear. I got to let you know there's a cure. And the cure for fear, I need you to lean in because that's what I'm prescribing to you today. That's the doses that I'm giving you. The cure for fear, watch this, is faith. That's why you showed up today. In spite of your fear, that's what drove you to this place. Because I have a remedy. I have something that's going to help you get through and get over fear. I hear what you're saying. Is it just that simple, Doc? Yes. The Bible lets us know that faith is a powerful thing. Faith in itself helps us. It, it gives us what we need when we need it. Matter of fact, faith, according to the Bible, is the only thing that really pleases God. Hebrews 11, 1 and 6 says, to have faith is to be sure of things we hope for, to be certain of things we cannot see. Watch this. No one can please God without faith. For whoever comes to God must have faith that God exists and rewards those who seek him. In times like these, it's easy to let fear grip our hearts, whether it's the fear of sickness, fear of lack, fear of the unknown, Fear what happens with our loved ones. Fear in these moments. Fear, should I go to the barber shop or not go? Should I go to the store or not go? But when fear seems to plague our every thought, we can remember this one important truth. This is why faith is the cure. is because God is with us. Even now, God is with us. He's with us, and not only is he with us, but he assures us that he loves us. Now, let me give you a warning about this treatment of faith. Don't think that you can just come in, take one dose of faith, and you'll be fine for the rest of your life. Know what I'm offering to you 
and the dosage of faith has to be taken continually. Because guess what? Fear is always going to come out. Can I be honest with you? Just like they have flu season and other things, they're saying that next wave of this coronavirus can come back even more deadly and lethal. Let me tell you, there is never an off season for fear. Fear happens at every point and place of life. And here's the thing I need to warn you. Just because you have faith doesn't mean it takes the fear away. But what faith does do is allows us to embrace our fears while also experiencing God. It allows us to embrace our weaknesses while also encouraging others. It allows us to embrace our doubts while also embodying courage. So listen, I need to give this to you as any good doctor would. I don't want to just prescribe to you medication and not tell you how it's going to help you. Listen, there are some side effects, but they're good side effects to faith. They're positive side effects that faith does in order to help us combat fear. Let me share them with you before I administer them to you. Because I need you to know what you're taking today. I need you to make sure that you know why faith is important in order to cure our fear. Well, this dosage of faith, it first of all readjusts our focus from fear. That when you have faith, it readjusts your focus. And it does not allow you to focus on the fear that you're experiencing. Let me lift up another thing that I see in my notes as part of the manual that tells us why faith helps us overcome fear. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Here in the book of Isaiah, God reminds the people, fear not. I love this because if you look at this phrase in Scripture, there's 365 instances of that one phrase, fear not, which means that God gives us a fear not for every single day. Here it is. God is literally telling the people and telling you and I that when we have fear, we should not struggle. We should not be afraid. Why? Because our focus should be on God. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18 and 19 also talks about this whole notion of how faith is exemplified through something that I want to tell you is also a mixture in what I'm offering today that is love. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment. Whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. Yeah, <laughs> what I'm giving you today, this faith has a mixture of love in it as well. Those two things together helps to make sure our focus is where it needs to be in order to overcome our fear. But what happens when we don't have that love? What happens when fear seems to outweigh or outfocus our faith? Well, not too long ago, matter of fact, within the last year, I happened to be at a zoo. And there was an exhibit of the bald eagle. I love the bald eagle, an amazing, majestic creature. But what was interesting, when I went to this, this exhibit, there was no roof on it or there was no walls. It was amazing to me because I think of an eagle soaring through the air and having its wings spread out until I got closer to the exhibit. And there was a sign right there next to the exhibit, and this is what the sign said. The birds in this exhibit have sustained permanent injuries in the wild and cannot fly. In other words, because of the injuries of its past, this bird was unable to fly into its future. And that's sometimes what fear can do. That's why many of us are struggling. Even right now, we are sick with fear because of something that has managed to somehow inhibit us and cripple us in our past. Fear in our past can sometimes stop our progress in our future. That's why you got to jump on this now. That's why the only way you can get past fear is you got to have faith. Psalm 34 and 4 says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all of my fears. One of my favorite songs, Psalm 27, 1 through 3, also gives us a good way that the psalmist declares how one should focus in times when they are tremor and terrified. This is what David says, the Lord is my light. And my salvation, in whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid when evildoers sell me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes? It is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamps against me, my heart shall not fear. The war, sickness, or plague rises against me. Yet will I be confident. 
In other words, what the psalmist is saying is that your focus determines how you get through your fear. John Wesley one day, this great thinker, one of the founders of the Wesleyan or Methodist movement, was walking with a troubled man who expressed his doubt to the goodness of God. He said, I don't know what I shall do with all this worry and trouble. And while they're walking along, John Wesley and the man, John Wesley sees a cow looking over a stone wall. Do you know, asked Wesley, why that cow is looking over that wall? The man said, no, I don't know why. Wesley said, the cow is looking over the wall because he cannot see through the wall. That is what you must do with your wall of fear. Look over it and avoid it. That's what faith does. That's why this dosage of faith is going to be beneficial in us to get through fear because faith enables us to look past our circumstances and focus on Christ. I guarantee you, money back guarantee you, that faith overcomes fear by readjusting our focus. But also, I also want you to know that faith overcomes fear because it reorders our priorities in fear. Let's be honest. Most of the fear that we wrestle with and struggle with that has infected our life is because our life is out of priority. It's out of order. Because you're trying to figure out how you can make it through and fail to understand that the in order of life is not us and God, it's God and us. That's why too many of us become slaves to our circumstances. Romans 8 and 15 says, For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. In other words, what I'm simply suggesting for us today and why we got infected by fear and how fear got in our lives is because oftentimes we wanted to operate based on what we see and not what we believe. You got to be careful. I hate to tell you that sometimes your eyes are lying to you. That's why he tells us in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. I'll never forget the year was 1999. I was actually in college when a news headline spread across the newspaper. <laughs> I know that sounds so old uh, to many of you out there, but back when I was in college, there was no social media. I think the only thing we had was Black Planet back then. But there was a headline that went out, John F. Kennedy Jr. has died. We got the things that happened in the story. Come to find out that Kennedy with his wife and her sister were headed to a wedding when their plane crashed. Now, Kennedy was a pilot. Matter of fact, he was a licensed pilot, but he was only improved to fly with sight. He had not yet been approved to fly with instrumentation. See, there's a difference. Flying with instrumentation meant that even when your sight was messed up, you could still fly based on the instruments in your cockpit. But for whatever reason, the flight that night was delayed, and guess what happened? He decided to take off after dark. They were flying over a body of water where his vision was smeared, but because he could not follow the instrumentation panel, his vision was so messed up it caused him to crash. Three lives were lost because he was operating by sight. Sight is difficult. That's why for many of us, this has been a hard challenge. For me personally, I will admit to you, that's why I'm wrestling and feeling the weight of what we're going through because my human reason is trying to find an answer for this. My human reason is trying to figure out why are we stuck in this situation. My human reason is trying to navigate and come up with an answer. But here is the truth. We can't make it through with human reason. It'll fail us every time. But where human reason fails, God never fails. That's why the Bible said, trust in the Lord in all thy ways he will direct us. His word keeps you and I on the right course as long as we obey. That's why 1 John 4 and 18 reminds us there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not been perfected in love. That's why this injection of faith that I'm giving you today is important. Because it gives us this unconditional tie to know that even though we may not understand it, God will still make a way somehow. That even though our minds are trying to figure it out, what faith plus love does, it works it out. Reminds me of the little girl who was unaccustomed to traveling. She was taking a train ride through the country. 
but she was definitely afraid and had all these questions about how this train would get over bodies of water and make it through dark tunnels. She saw the body of water out her window and she gripped her seat tightly, not sure how they were going to make it through. She did not know how this train was going to make it over until they got right to the body of water and to her surprise, the train kept trucking. Guess what? There was a bridge for the train to go over. <laughs> Matter of fact, they came to another body of water not too long ago, uh, not long after that. And guess what? The same thing happened. A bridge was right over the troubled water. And in essence, she laid back, gave a sigh of relief. And this is what she said. Somebody has put bridges for us all of the way. You and I are just like this little girl that we can oftentimes create scenarios of our doom. We can create scenarios of our demise. We can assume that we'll go crashing into the rivers of pain and to the rivers of hurt and to the rivers of torrent. But I've got good news, just like this little girl find out God will put bridges all the way through. That stuff you can't figure out, God will work out. <laughs> That's what faith does. It lets us know that God has already set something ahead of us to get us safely through. Not only will this shot of faith readjust us and reorder us, but I'm also here to tell you that <laughs> it replenishes our hope against fear. Yeah, here's the truth. You're going to get tired. Fear is going to weigh on you. That's why I told you, you just can't take one dose of faith and think that's all you need. No, <laughs> you're going to have to keep taking faith. Every day, you're going to have to take a regimen of faith. When you wake up, take some faith. As you go throughout your day, take some faith. Yes, yeah, right here in my notes. Even as you go to today at night, take two doses of faith. You're going to need to make sure that you consistently keep Faith in your system. The only way you can fight off fear is to have a consistent regimen of faith. Because the more faith you put in you, the more hope you have. Hope is important. Matter of fact, that's what we learn in Deuteronomy 31 and 8. The Lord, he that go before thee, he will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Here's why I want to be honest with you. I can already tell, and you're not by yourself. I need you to know that. When you're fearing a situation or emotional challenge, you've got to really envision God saying this. You've got to hear God in your spirit say to you, I'm still on your side. No matter what happens, that promise lasts forever. <laughs> that promise of God is going to outlast this quarantine. This promise from God is going to outlast us being sheltered in place. This promise for God is an unconditional, eternal promise God gives us. It even outlasts disappointments when friends or family members or coworkers may disappoint us. Here's the good news. God will never turn on us. Matter of fact, I can even tell you, I'm not just a doctor, but I've also been in the position of the patient. I've had some of my most lowest and painful moments of life have also been the same time I've been the closest to God. I'll never forget moments of not knowing what to do and being in a fetal position only to have God breathe his promises back on me to remind me that this was not the moment to give up, to lose my faith because what we have in our faith is what gets us through. Matter of fact, <laughs> the mere fact you are here in this examination room means that you've got a little bit of faith. You decided to show up even though things were crazy. You still came even though you were infected with fear. And that's the power of faith. Just a little bit can turn your situation around. Just a little bit of faith can make all the difference. Romans 8 and 31 says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? There's a word that has always given me comfort. It's the 23rd division of Psalm. You know that Psalm. It's the shepherd's Psalm. But there's a portion of it that I appreciate that I feel addresses fear. Verse 4, Psalm 23 tells us, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. That's powerful. Because if you notice in Psalm 23, the opening starts with God guiding the sheep. Around verse 5 and 6, it's, it slows down with the shepherd behind the sheep. But verse 4 is when the shepherd walks beside the sheep. He walks beside the sheep and notice when? When they're in the shadow of death. Think about that. That when we walk through the valley, and this is the reality, 
we're going to have valleys to walk through. That's what we're going through now, just valley. But he says, you can't avoid valleys, but know you're not by yourself in the valley. Even though I walk through the valley. I love those little terms in that Bible. Even though you are afraid, even though we walked through COVID, even though we lost a job, even though our loved one is sick, even though, even though, here's the thing, you're not walking through it by yourself. Matter of fact, the real shout of that text for me and why I wanted to give you this encouragement and this cure today is that notice what he says, yea, though I walk through. There's a difference between walking through and walking to. The through means you're not going to be in this forever. Faith doesn't cure us by taking away fear. No, but what faith does is it cures us by giving us everything to embrace the fear and experience God because God is the only one that can help us through this. Here's the thing I want you to know, and I, and I hear you, because one thing that fear does is fear has a tendency to make us assume that we're in life by ourselves. But this is where faith kicks in. Faith tells us we're not alone. Faith tells us when the storm rages, he offers us peace and refuge in the midst of it. Where fear shows up, he promises hope and strength. That's what God is saying. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. One day, a little boy was getting ready to go to his little friend's birthday party. He was excited. Everyone in the neighborhood was going to go. It was the next day. and He had gained permission from his parents. But as he slept that night... A blizzard came into the town, and uh, can you imagine his surprise as he woke up to see a blanket of white on the ground, on the street? He knew for some reason, this is not good, that perhaps my friend's party would be, would be canceled. They called down to his friend's house, and for some reason, the parents said, no, we're going to still have the party. For those who can come, you can come. So the little boy goes to his dad and said, Dad, I, I really want to go to the party. I laid out my clothes. Father said, son, I don't think it's a good idea for you to go to the party. Walk through the snow, it's going to be bad. The little boy was persistent. He was angry. He said, come on, dad, I really want to go to the party. The father said, son, I don't think it's a good idea that you go. It's cold outside. It's slippery. The snow's outside. But the little boy was persistent. Until finally the father said, you know what? Okay, you can go. It's just a few blocks down the road. I'll let you go. Can you imagine the excitement of a little boy and as he goes down and he puts his coat on and he puts his hat on, he puts his scarf around his neck and he goes out and he braves the cold and he's making his way down the street and as he's walking down the street past one block, he's now on two blocks and now he finally has made his way to his friend's house and rings the doorbell and while he waits on someone to answer the door, he just so happens to turn around and he sees a large figure walking back down the street. He recognizes the figure. The figure was wearing a coat he knows his father wears, where it finally has come to him. His father had followed him down the street. In other words, even though he was walking through the blizzard in what he felt was all by himself, the good news is his father was not going to let him journey alone. That's the good news I got for you today. That's what this dose and of faith is going to give you. That's why I believe that it can cure our fear is because it reminds us that God is always with us no matter where you are, no matter what's happening, no matter what may be terrorizing you. I've got good news to let you know that God's promise through faith is he'll always be there. That's what should remind us, that our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. The cure for fear is our faith. Well, listen, <laughs> I appreciate you coming today. I know this was not easy news to take. And here's the truth. <laughs> it's always going to be fear season. But there's a cure for our fear. That is faith. My prayer for you is that you would be consistent and intentional about making sure that you take your dose of faith every single day. There are going to be things that's going to always come. There's going to be all kinds of stuff, even now in this season. we got to somehow find a way to guard our mind, our heart, and our spirit. 
And fear is really the bedrock. It's the virus that really causes a lot of other viruses. I hate to inform you, but I'm going to need you to come back in next week. I tested positive for a few other things, and I need to share with you what they are. But unlike COVID-19 or coronavirus, I got a cure for you. And you don't have to wait 18 to 24 months to get this cure. But you can have this cure right now. If I'm speaking to you, if this was your examination, if you know what it is to be infected with fear, I want you to know God always has given us what we need to get through our fear. This is a great opportunity, even at this point, for us to pray together, to ask God's faith to be embedded in us. Inject your faith, God. We need it every single day. Matter of fact, I also want to give you an opportunity if this word was helpful, I know a place that can help you grow in your faith. That's the Tabernacle Baptist Church. We will be absolutely honored to have you join with us, to partner with us. There's a multitude of ways for you to do that, whether it's through texting, join, or connect, or even emailing, connect with us at tbcaugusta.org, or even go to our website, tbcaugusta.org, and guess what? There's, greater, there's great information there. Or even while we're in the comments section, we have our I-team that's already on hand to engage with you. If you're saying, PG, listen, I'm infected with fear, raise that hand. We want to make sure that you get some help. We want to make sure that you have the right dosage of faith to get through fear. God reminds us that we're going to walk through the valley, but we don't need to fear. Why? Because God is with us. It's a great invitation for you to partner with us. And I need you to understand, and I need you to know with certainty and assurance that God will never leave us nor forsake us. While you're contemplating that, let us pray together. God, we thank you and we bless you. And even though we come to this moment when we must be honest that our fears are real, we're struggling trying to make sense of the world as it is now. And God, we know how deadly the virus is, but God, we also know how deadly the virus of fear is. For many of us, it has paralyzed us and stymied us, caused our focus to be off, our priorities to be out of order, and our hope to be drained. But God, I'm grateful that even when fear comes, you give us the faith we need. So, Lord, my prayer today is you would strengthen our faith. Strengthen our confidence and trust in you. Even in uncertain times, we can echo the sentiments of the seasoned saints who said, hold to God's unchanging hands. That even though we may not know how things are going, you're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. For that, we are appreciative and we honor you. So God, we pray that we do the things necessary to grow our faith. So God, I'm prescribing for someone today a healthy dose of the Word of God. I'm prescribing today a healthy dose of prayer and times of medication, meditation. I'm praying today, God, and prescribing a healthy dose of us realizing with certainty and assurance that your presence is always there. So God, do that for us. Guide us, lead us, be with us. That is our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. It is my prayer that you would find the cure, that you would administer the cure. Listen, I could prescribe it for you all day, but you have to take it. What's the point of having the medicine and not taking the medicine? Listen, I'll see you next week as we share an incredible word with you. As we're still finding the cure, there's other viruses beside fear. But I want you to know, no matter what they are, God has a cure for us. Once again, I love you. Thank you for celebrating 13 years with me. Remember, help us be a blessing to our community. And I'm grateful for every gift that's been given back today through our PG-13 give back. Grateful for the many people we're going to be able to be a blessing to. And that's why when we close our services, we always say that mantra. Because we believe it and we live by it. Matter of fact, I want you to say it with me at this time. Lift those hands. 
Repeat after me. Because I've been blessed, I'm going to be a blessing. Go in peace. And may God give you the faith to overcome your fear. Love you much. Take care. Tab I Fam, I hope that you received that word today. You know, as we just concluded the first installment of our new series, Finding the Cure, you know, there is so much in our world that we can be afraid of. You know, the challenges of experiencing this virus and the unknown. There's so much to be afraid of. But as we were reminded by PG today, that faith doesn't simply take away fear, but faith allows us to face fear courageously, knowing that no matter what is going on in our world, God is still active and God is at work. And no matter what, we can take the step again. You know, if you were blessed by that word, I want you to hit us up, shout us out on, 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 on your social media platforms and make sure you share this video. Thank you for showing up and supporting and engaging. We just hope that you were blessed by this experience and that you would take this word that you receive and this experience that you had today, that you would take it wherever you go. Thank you once again. We love you. We are praying for you. We are here to support you. Like I say every week, the church building may be closed. You may not be here, but the church is still open. We love you. We're praying for you. See you next week.